Hi everyone, I'm Michael Bobe with Consumer Recovery Network and today's video is going to be about how to raise money to get out of debt. More specifically, I work with people that are resolving problem debt, like they run out of money before they run out of months, something's got to give, what's my plan going to be to deal with all this stuff, or they're dealing with collections, things that are way past the point of being paid on time. And so when you're looking for money to come up with to resolve a debt, when you're already late, you can usually settle for less. You can take a debt that you haven't paid for, say, five months, a credit card debt, and negotiate for half or less. A lot of time, quite a bit less than half. And at the time I'm recording this, we're in the middle of COVID-19, and some creditors are starting to lower their expectations about what they should be able to recover on unpaid debt in such an economic climate. And so that starts to impact how you can raise money too. So I'm gonna go down a list of things that I usually walk people through during an, one of my original phone consults that I do with people to help them determine what path is mathematically appropriate for them to try and deal with their debt. And it's, it's focused on debt settlement. And so let's start. When I'm talking to somebody who is no longer able to make their minimums and they're just starting to realize that, they haven't even missed payments or they've just missed payments, well, maybe they couldn't make their required minimums on their, say, $30,000 worth of credit card debt. And maybe their required minimums are closer to like $900, $1,100, but maybe they could save up $500 or $400. Not enough to keep everybody happy, but enough to start saving up every month. So there's option number one. Save up monthly from paychecks, every paycheck, and whatever you can consistently do. So let's assume in the, for this experiment here, it's $500 a month this person's going to save. So that's $6,000 a year. And so let's say that $30,000 could be settled for 15, half off. Well, they're almost halfway there and they need to save up another year. Well, now they're 12,000. So they're really only $3,000 short from being able to finish settlements inside of two years just from their monthly paychecks, as long as the, that savings stays consistent. So where can we fill some gaps? Well. One, I take people through what they get in a tax refund. A lot of times those tax refunds are something that we might set aside for property taxes or one of those one-off yearly expenses and we kind of look at that tax refund as a way to do that. But if that's not the case for you, a needful thing that that tax refund is gonna pay, braces for a kid or something like that, then you look at that and you go, okay, well, I'm gonna take that $2,000 tax return and in this case, I'm only one grand short now from helping this person settle all their debt inside of two years. What are some other things we can do? Well, there's work bonuses, end of year bonuses, there's different quarterly bonuses. If you're involved in a scenario where you work and you get better commissions in some uh, periods of the year, a cyclical type of job, there's a whole bunch of things that come from work bonuses that you can start to think of, oh, well, how's that gonna work? What if you took on extra work? And this is where COVID-19 might be impacting some of us that would regularly try to go out and earn extra income. We didn't lose our job, we still have our main job, but we lost our side gig. Well, there's a lot of ways to earn side money, but in the middle of social distancing, not many people want you walking or washing their dog, or there's a whole lot demand, less demand for because of travel for Uber and Lyft and things like that. Tons, we actually have an article, a great article on how to earn extra cash, and so I'll link to it here in the video, but there's other things, other people might have different situations. We just solved this person's problem using $500. They can't afford their $900 or $1,000 a month minimums and have stopped paying their creditors. And we just solved their problem in two years or less, right? And sometimes people need more money than that and or they can't set aside much from income. And so they're looking really hard for other ways to raise cash. Sometimes that involves selling something. Um, I worked with a guy who couldn't qualify for Chapter 7 bankruptcy where he would have otherwise because he had a gun collection and was handed down from generation to generation. Just one of those guns was worth $33,000. He hated to sell it, but he did. And he used it to get out of debt. I've worked with people who had no other choice but to try and take a 401k loan out. Why? Because they're being sued. And they'd rather take a loan out, pay themselves back with interest rather than have their wages garnished 25% because of if that's what happens in most states if they get a judgment against you. Only a few, five states, do not allow wage garnishment. So that leaves a lot of us exposed. You could borrow from a family member. I mean, we don't want to go to our family members or friends with problems, but a lot of them would wish that we had if they really knew what was going on. And sometimes in a scenario where I just outlined this person, 30 grand worth of debt, we just solved their problem inside of 
24 months for 13,000, 12,000, and maybe their settlements actually went that low because a lot can go less than half. But let's say um, one of the more aggressive creditors sued them and then they just burn through all their cash to settle one debt at seven months and then the next month they're getting sued by Amex or something. Okay, well, that's negotiable, you can settle that. But now they need cash in an emergency, right? And so I walk people through these examples in an initial, hard, or in an initial consult because I want to explain to them, this is your creditor list. And these are the ones that are super really flexible and actually tend to just give a little bit more rip about humanity and, and give you some options that are more flexible for you. And then there's banks like I pick on Amex a lot just because of how aggressive they can be and how early aggressive they can be. And then of course, debt buyers that pick up debt and they're all aggressive. And there's ways that we, I can walk you through an initial phone consult and build out this plan, right? Okay, well, let's, let's hit everything. Let me target what you can settle for because I actually know what these guys are gonna settle for. Boots on the ground intel right now. You schedule a call with me, we'll walk through all of it and we'll talk about how you get from point A, unsure about what to do and what's going to work for you, to confident about the debt relief choice that you're gonna make, whatever that may be. And if it is settlement, because of the intel that I have, I can just walk you through, build out the entire plan. So these are different ways that you can settle debt. Another element that it can be introduced to this is that I just mentioned some creditors that are actually flexible. And they're limited in their flexibility prior to charge off because there's some federal regulation or OCC guidance, one of the bank's regulators that prevents them from doing longer than 90 day or 94 day, but it works up to three months. Terms on a settlement that you, you have to pay it in three months if you're settling before you're six months late. After you're six months late, that OCC rule doesn't apply. And guess what that means? Some of your creditors will give you 12 months to pay a settlement. So what if you did get half off in 12 months? Guess what? Some of the debt buyers that love to sue, you don't have to get sued by them because as soon as they get the counts, and I can tell you, you know, you can post in the comments below or you can go um, pick up the phone. We'll talk through an entire plan and I can tell you which debt buyers are gonna sometimes even give you 48 months to pay. No reason to get sued by these guys if they're gonna give you half-ish off and a whole bunch of time to pay those debts. So you can work that into your overall strategy. So going back again to this 30,000 settle for 15 example, what if that person didn't have the tax refund, but one of their accounts landed at 18 months or 14 months with a debt buyer that was gonna give them three years to pay a half off settlement? Here's all of the ways that you can tackle a, a, a big problem that seems and feels, and it's very stressful, all of this debt, but you can build out a condensed period of time because you can settle for less and get out of these things. So as you're thinking about what you're going to do to raise this cash, be thinking about the fact that some of this pain, some of these settlements, even if you're dealing with a, a settlement or a, a negotiation that you need to do right now today, but you don't have the cash and you're worried about getting sued, that's okay. Because sometimes you can put the deal together, get time to pay, and you get that out of the way, you're not looking over your shoulder anymore, and you can actually strategize for the next step, the next step. Like I said, I answer all my YouTube comments every day, seven days a week with my morning coffee, so feel free to post questions about you know, how to resolve certain debts and, and come up with mathematical plans to resolve them in the comments. And then, like I said, you're more than welcome to schedule a phone consult with me. They're free, um, they're pretty informative, and I can get you on your way pretty quickly. See you on the next video.